Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm very tired. Yeah, I've been very I'm tired that. all week. It just, um, I think, like, the temperature change fluctuation has got me yeah, all like, just wanting to curl up and take a nap. Yes. And also, I got my second shot last Friday and didn't really sleep much at all that night. And I think I've just all week been trying to make up that sleep debt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, sleep debt is real. It's so real. Um, but I'm off tomorrow, so I will I will be working on it then. <laughs> That's good. Make up for it. Yeah, the weather this week has definitely I mean, it's spring. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it does. But just it is it is for sure uh, a little different. I brought a special guest today and it's kind of weather related. Um, OK, I brought one of my tomato plants. <laughs> That's um, looking great. I know I brought them inside because I told you I rambled on about that one week about how I have the greenhouse outside. And um, even though that should theoretically protect everything, I still brought everything in because it just seemed like I was on the yeah. fence about it, but it seemed like it was going to get really cold and they would be happier inside. I have some grow lights and stuff. So anyway, I just wanted everybody to say hello to my uh, tomato plant because it's just the way the weather is. You know, I looked outside, my parents sent me a picture of their yard, you know, covered in snow. And I was like, well, in a matter of weeks, you're theoretically going to be planting one of these. So uh, yeah. it's just hard to imagine how quickly things change. It's not at all. Hi, Liz. It's not at all fair that we have to worry about both mowing our grass and scraping snow yeah, off. It. Like when you when you have one, you should not have to do the other. Yeah, I agree. I think that if you're gonna, yeah, if you have to spend your time doing one thing, you shouldn't, it's right. just not fair. It's not reasonable. Yeah. It's like seasons need to stay separated <laughs> and do the appropriate thing at the appropriate time. But it is spring and I'm very glad it looks like <laughs> I was worried about the trees, like the the frost and the snow, like, you know, killing yeah. the flowers and the blossoms on the trees. But it looks like things were mostly OK because the, the trees are so pretty and I'm just glad we didn't lose them. Yeah. Yeah. The only flowers I have right now are um, my tulips and tulips do snow. Yes. Well, so. Yeah. And my yeah. my daffodils. My daffodils were already kind of on. They're already very gone yeah. on the way out. So um, I think this could have hastened that, but I think that they're fine. So um, Liz says yeah. she has to deal with this all the time. So welcome to her life. Yeah, Liz likes to send pictures of snow at just very unreasonable times. Uh, <laughs> like One of my man. friends posted a picture of her backyard in the morning and then in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. and, you know, completely covered in snow, bright, shiny oh, sun, green grass, yes. you know. Oh, yeah, it's fun. That was weird, yeah. too. Everything melted away, and then you had this beautiful spring day. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to gratuitously show this again, because I don't know if Judith was here. Judith, I wanted to make sure you saw my tomato plant. I actually thought of you when I uh, decided <laughs> to bring this as a special guest, because uh, Judith is uh, a major plant person, so I wanted, I wanted to make sure she saw it. Um, we'll have, we'll be able to talk. Sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. In, the, in the, in the year that we have, um, done this show, I have had three different plants in this spot back here. I've decided I'm never putting a plant there again. Um, mm -hmm. apparently it's the spot of death. Oh, and so you've had three plants because they've all died. Yes. The first one died. The second one died. The third one is not looking happy. Um, it's not dead yet. <laughs> but it's getting there it's getting there yeah i'm sorry yes i'm a plant killer i can't help it i try i love them i think my problem is i too much love them and i overwater yeah i think that's very easy to do but you do a great job with the artificial flowers that are on the other side of the frame right they they have held up well <laughs> Oh, thank you, Judith. You said, I thank you for saying my tomato plant was beautiful. That was absolutely the compliment I was fishing for. So thank you. Um, oh, yesterday, Melanie says yesterday that someone had hail at her house at lunchtime, but that they had nothing at the Amanda branch. I think um, I heard of some reports of hail as well. We had something at Northwest that made sound on the roof, but looked white like snow. So I don't know what it was. <laughs> 
I just ignore it. That's one of the nice things about being in the basement at the library is sometimes right. like those midday happenings yeah. happen and I have I know nothing about them. It's it, there's it's a double edged sword. You don't ever get to see outside, but also you don't have to see outside. Like I was all grumpy when I came in because of the snow, but then I left and it was a beautiful day. <laughs> it was a completely <laughs> different day than when you came in. Yes. Yes, I have something to report on, which when we did our um, when we did our show topic of like the mass market paperbacks, the mm -hmm. mysteries and yeah. you know, um, one of the books I brought in was an Amish candy shop mystery. And the only reason why I really remember it and why that was one I wanted to bring in is because there was like this, you know, small town street and there was like a pig running down the street and I picked it because there was a pig running down the street. Well, we got another one in from the Amish candy shop mysteries and the pig, there's another pig on the cover. It's the same pig. And I don't know this, I think they might be having a baby shower or something, but the pig is wearing like a baby bonnet, which is very silly and eye catching. And so when I saw it, um, apparently he's like a regular character in the Amish candy shop mysteries and his name is Jethro. And so I just wanted to update everybody that the Amish candy shop mysteries feature a pig named Jethro who is involved in the plot and who on the cover of the books was dressed as a baby. So. That is awesome. You're welcome. Um, some of the Outlander books feature a pig. Well, really? the, the, the Sal who lives under the porch, and she's not nice. Like, and she just gets mentioned here and there. I love, I love a, side, a side character that's an animal. Yeah, like, like it, it, it's not a character, but Rolo, Rolo's a character. He's He plays a big part in a lot of the stories, but the, they, they often mention the, the white sow that lives under the porch. I think she's white. That's great. And she lives under yeah. the porch. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple. Melanie wanted to know if it's the Amanda Flower books. I actually don't know the author. I, I do know it's the Amish Candy Shop Mysteries is the name of the series, though. And they put it in a little outline of a piece of candy, hard candy. Um, and then Liz says she's going to be on the beach in less than 12 hours. So she's just ignoring weather that isn't sun. Where are you I'm going to the beach? I need to be yeah. on the beach in 12 hours. Yeah. Yeah, no beaches nearby. No. Beaches for us. <laughs> but I do have the next 10 days off. I work today, and then I have 10 days off. That's a lot of days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you going to do anything? Um, I'm going to sleep. Yeah, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> no, I don't really have anything planned. I'm still yeah. kind of like not super comfortable going places yet mm -hmm. i'll admit i'm one of those more um cautious mm -hmm. people when it comes to yeah. being out and about so right yeah i'm still not there i just yeah yeah needed a break it seemed yeah. like a good um, i hope that you have some good downtime and maybe the weather will cooperate for you to get like some it's Still too soon to put the actual plants out, but maybe you can yeah. do some. Because I know we talked about that before, about yeah. taking time to get that garden things taken care of in the spring. Yes, yes. And I've still got, like, cleaning out my flower beds from last year to do. Yeah. So that'll happen next week. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully you have a few good days for that. I think we're supposed <laughs> to be 80 on Tuesday, so, I mean. That's too hot. <laughs> I know. I'm never satisfied, but, uh, yes, that this is. I agree. Florida, nice. Oh yeah. It's nice, nice when you've got parents who live somewhere like exciting like that and you can go visit. Isn't that, it? Yeah. yeah, people who have like I know friends who live in, elsewhere. A built-in <laughs> vacation spot because that, someone they know lives uh, right. Tara, who sometimes is on here commenting, has relatives in upstate New York. So mm -hmm. she gets to go to like the lakes and yeah. just you know it's it's a great, a great area for birding. Yes, and Tara does love birding. I'm sure she's so, going to be so happy that we're talking about her. Um, <laughs> yeah. She's going to be doing a birding program for me this summer. Yes, and if you ever want someone to do a birding program, well, well, a birding program, Tara, and I was going to say, and also also her mom, who does wildlife right. programs. Yes. But, um, but yes, I'm excited about our birding program. She's so good at all of that, and she just... It's great working with her. She'll be like, come here, come here, come here. And I go running out front. She like hands me some binoculars. She's like, look over there. And I'm like looking. And then she tells me what bird I'm looking at. So um, 
Yeah. I'm glad we're doing or that. Or she even just identify them when she hears them. She's like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a, and she'll rattle off the name. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So I'm and, glad that we're going to put her expertise to use. <laughs> <laughs> and she, um, I think out there at the library, you had uh, some kind of dove. Uh, and she pointed out, like, look how stupid this bird is. Look yes. at this nest. They call that a nest. So yes. she had pointed that yes. out to me. That and might even be a morning right? dove. Um, because the there nest was like three sticks. Yes. And then like an egg barely in in them or whatever. And she's like, you know, this is this is why their eggs get stolen and eaten and fall on the ground. <laughs> pigeons do the same thing, apparently. Like mm. pigeons and morning doves are very, very stupid nest builders they're very bad nest builders so yeah and so they have to stay close by all the time and are always yelling at you and stuff the other bird we have out there right now well we've got a lot of birds out there but one of my favorites that we have right now is um a killdeer and um they have this like very squeaky shrill call they i just think that they're screaming that's how i think of it because they just like are always making this call and they run around on the ground a lot because apparently they put their nest, I think they put their nest on the ground. Um, and so they kind of stay close by to that, but they have very long legs and for their size anyway. And they'll just, I take a walk up and down the road and they'll like be walking kind of alongside me. Their legs are moving so fast and they're just like screaming the whole time. And I, <laughs> they just really crack me up. And if you ever have an opportunity to Google a baby kill deer, they're very, very cute because their legs are so long and knobbly. And, and it's like, Aww. so I think um, they're running along protecting, you know, making sure I don't get into their nest or whatever, but it makes me laugh. Uh, Liz pointed out that there is a field guide to stupid birds, which is a great laugh. It is very much. Yes. <laughs> the library has a couple copies if you want to put it on hold. But as Liz warns, it is very not safe for work. So <laughs> we will yes. feature it on this show. <laughs> I think Leah and I have both purchased this book as a gift for someone in our lives. We have. Yes. <laughs> and it's funny. It's not like it's not really out of hand. It's no, just no, it's just language and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they, they don't hold back on calling the birds names. <laughs> right. But you but 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 the information in it is still like good and true. It is accurate. They're, yeah. they're making fun of the birds, but the facts that are in it are still real. So you can still like mm -hmm. learn about identification from this book. I wouldn't make it your sole source, but you know, no. you, when you look through it, There's you'll know. Really the bird. It's you can you can if you're seeing the bird right in front of you, you can identify it. It's not right. like it's not like great detail drawings, but identifiable ish. Right. 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 I think the drawings are also intentionally meant to be a little bit silly too. But yeah, I think it's called the Field Guide to Dumb Birds, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you, Liz, for bringing that up. That's actually a book we both read <laughs> <laughs> and purchased <laughs> and have seen at the library. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's great. Um, we also have just, this came up on my desk this week at the library, mm -hmm. speaking of nature books, we've gotten two books this year about oak trees and not like, not like nature books about oak trees or identification or something like that, but just two books about like the oak tree in the United States, like the history of the oak in America. And I love books like that, that are just like take some topic mm -hmm. and like explore the history of it, the social history, whatever. Um, but I just thought it was interesting that we got two, two books on the oak tree. It's very odd the way that happens. It's like suddenly there is like the topic and two mm -hmm. or three books come out about it at the same time. Like there was one, um, oh, what is that band's name? Um, but last sure. year there were like three books on this one band that came mm -hmm. out and like different people had put different books on hold so yeah. I had to buy like all three of them <laughs> for our patrons but it was seriously one band three different books um yeah it just it's, it's weird the way that happens it is and sometimes in a certain like depending on the topic sometimes I think um there's an anniversary you know yeah. of course we got like a gazillion books on the moon landing um at the anniversary there are a lot of bands, yes <laughs> it is. I know. what's that band I know I was sitting here thinking like well where do I begin um you know, so if there's an anniversary, we'll have a lot of books about that, which makes perfect sense. Um, sometimes I think, um, like, 
uh, protection on archival material lifts. You know, things are confidential yeah. for a certain amount of time and then they open. And so then maybe not something that's a huge deal, but a couple scholars who are into that each then dive in and write their own take on it. Mm -hmm. I think that that happens sometimes too. I don't know what it would be with the oak tree because I don't know. Is there an yeah, answer? I don't, have the oak tree. I don't know. You know, you can't keep this information secret until 75 years after my death or. <laughs> right, right. But that does happen. So, yeah, sometimes some years you're like, man, we've just gotten, like you said, you know, all these books on some band or something. And you wonder, like, would somebody give their diary or, you know, who knows? Yeah. But Yeah. Or did one of them die or, right. <laughs> or like, why, why the sudden interest in them again? Yeah. It was yeah. like a '70s band, and like I feel like it had like names in the in the. I don't, I don't know or remember. I'm sorry. I don't. I, and it's like when I see it, I'm be like, "How could I have forgotten that?" But yes, I forgot. Right. You have to update us in the comments if you remember. Yeah. So, do we want to talk about yeah. anything else today? Let's, yeah, well, let's talk about what we plan to talk about. We've, you know, <laughs> really dallied long enough, probably. We have names. Yes, they had names in the name. So. We're yeah. getting there. We're getting close. I'm sure it's just right there. I feel like, like it, it was like their last names or something or. Was it Hall and Oates? No. We're not doing this. We cannot we're not, spend we're the not. duration we're, of the show. too much time. So, um. How about you lead us, you start us. You start us with what we were actually gonna talk about. We were gonna talk about digital services. We're all, we talk about books a lot. We talk about books eight out of 10 weeks. Um, <laughs> the other two, we just randomly babble at you. Um, Crosby, You're Still, welcome. and Nash. <gasps> yes, that's the one. I'm like, I feel like Young was in there. Yes, <laughs> yes. There were like three books about them last year. I didn't realize there were. I mean, um, I did them, but I in one year, not the other. I guess. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> you do win. I don't know what you win. We don't have a prize to send you. We have no budget for this, but no budget at all. When we discard the books, we'll send them to you in ten years. There you go. How about that? You, you just remember ten years from now, right? <laughs> um. But digital services, we talk about books a lot. Um, and Hoopla and Overdrive, I feel like we talk about on here quite a bit. And um, so you're probably familiar with those. I do have exciting Overdrive news for you. If um, you haven't noticed yet, you can now have 25 books checked out at the same time on Overdrive. It used to be 10. Now it's 25. I'll tell you what my limit is on overdrive um, because I usually look at audiobooks. So my <laughs> limit is usually my phone storage. Like my phone starts to slow down because I can't have that many audiobooks downloaded to my device at one time. But I'm glad to hear for people who don't max out their phone storage or who are doing ebooks on an e reader, which is yeah. a much different thing. <laughs> I, um, I, I usually with overdrive have like one maybe two books checked out at the same time and then i return them when i'm done so i yes i will never hit that 25 limit there but yeah no i don't think i will either and that's actually something i like about overdrive um where they encourage you they they kind of like encourage you to return early if you're done they yeah. remind you by saying you know like what are they Three people are waiting <laughs> and, yes they say that and then what do they they say they have some phrase that they use like I don't know something about a good turn, where like if you yeah. like if you're doing a good thing if you return it early. And um, yeah. I know I like getting books before I expected to get them, and so they kind of encourage you on overdrive to return, which I think is nice because you don't have the incentive of like the book sitting sitting on your table next to you as I always do. Got to return these. Got to return these. They just kind of wait into your account until they disappear. And mm -hmm. so I think it's nice they encourage you to return it to so the next person. Yeah. And Liz just downloaded 10 for her vacation. She well, keeps good. in that vacation, you know? <laughs> I know. Yeah, it keeps mentioning it. Well, and that's a good point. Yeah, one good turn deserves another. I think something like that, they say. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so you that's know, great. It, it makes, when people are returning them early, it makes your wait time shorter. So I always and love a shorter wait time. I know we're supposed to be talking about every other service, but just one more thing. Uh, on Overdrive, it is also nice how you can manage your loan and you can, uh, or manage your hold, 
and you can have it delivered in seven right. days, any number of days, like up until whatever, you know, whatever the upper day. Maybe, I think. It's just so nice that you can stretch it out because you're just not ready for it yet, but you'll want it next month. And they just keep, you keep your place in line. It's just really nice. Yeah, I, I really do like that. Um, <laughs> and Melanie's like, yeah, Liz, not all of us get to go to the beach. <laughs> Some of us even have to work tomorrow. So, you know. Right? Yeah. But um, but digital resources, a lot of people don't realize everything that the library has to offer. Um, and uh, uh, I, we just thought we should talk about some yeah. of that. Um, yes. I'll start with Ancestry.com. Oh, good it, one. Yeah. Well, Ancestry Library Edition. It is slightly different than Ancestry.com. Um, so if you have a point is leaking once I I'm, I'm sorry for being distracting over here. I just realized it was like leaking all over. Yeah. Right. So it is Continue. a little bit different than the paid version. Um, and, but it's, but you can do your genealogy research there and find your, find your people. Um, and they have, because of like the lockdown, because it has always been one of those that you had to come into the library to use, mm -hmm. but they, lifted that restriction during the lockout down and it is still temporarily available from home. You do have to start at the library's website and log in with your library card number to get to it, but um, it's there and you can use it. And it's a wonderful resource for people who are interested in genealogy research. Um, Liz wants to know if we have an Ohio room like the library both she and I are familiar with has the Indiana room. Mm -hmm. um, and I always, we have a historical collection that I always call the Ohio room, even though that's not what it's called <laughs> because I was used to the Indiana room. We do have a room of historical material relevant to our area and genealogical material. So yes, is the answer. And so by using ancestry.com and then we have things like passenger lists and genealogical guides and family histories. <clears throat> Lots of information, especially the local county information yeah. um, through the years. But and then some stuff on Ohio and some very little bit on other states. But yeah, we do have a, 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 a historical room, is what we call it. Yes, we call it the historical room, and I'm always calling it the Ohio room. People know what I'm talking about, so they don't correct me. <laughs> Ohio room is what came, I've never called it the Ohio room, but. I wanted to say Ohio room right then. That's why I stumbled over the name. Yeah. Local room. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. I'll be doing that from now on. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the, if I'll, I'll go next then. I'm so sorry. Uh, the resource that I have, um, it's just going to bring us back to the books, but I told Leah I wanted to talk about this one because I have a feeling a lot of people probably don't know we have it. And it's almost like, I feel like if you use it, you're going to feel like you're going to get a secret window into like a librarian tool. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, um, but it's a resource called Novelist. You access it from our website on our resources, electronic resources page under research tools. Um, it's called Novelist, and it basically just helps you decide what to read next. It describes a book using appeal terms. You can search based. So. For example, put in The Witch Elm. That's a book that we've talked about on here before. And um, it will give you appeal terms and about tone, about writing style, about characterization. So the style, they said, was compelling with well-crafted dialogue. The pace was leisurely. The storyline was intricately plotted. Themes include missing memories. Um, they have subject listings and everything. And then you can just check boxes and you can say, well, I want to read a book that has missing memories and an intricate plot. And then it will bring you results of the things that have those tags as well. Um, you can also just start on the homepage and browse. They have like a carousel that you can say, you know, are you interested in a leisurely paced and atmospheric book? You know, here are some. And so that's really fun. Um, you can also make your own, make your own. You can break it down and select different appeal factors and then be given a list of books and and some of the the ways they describe the appeal factors. Um, so, you know, a storyline could be action packed. It could be world building. A tone could be gossipy or humorous or homespun. Um, and then a character characterization could be, um, I didn't write a bunch of these down, but I noticed that they had both sassy and snarky. So I only want to read sassy and snarky characters. Um, 
So it's just, it's, it's really a really fun and engaging tool for a reader and you have full access to it through our website, Novelist right there. And I, I feel like it's a, just a, I don't know, just like a little peek into what, I mean, librarians use it all the time, so. Yes. Yeah, I, I really love it. And it's one of those things that I have used a lot since we've started the subscription bundles because mm -hmm. people will list books and like, I haven't read those. <laughs> like. Right. It's, it's, so it's getting an idea, you get a really good idea of what kind of story they like when you look at that book in Novelist because it will give you all of those elements of the story so you get a, a really good idea of what it is they like. And um, Novelist is also really good for finding read-alikes. So it will offer suggestions for books that are very similar to that book. So it's a, yeah. good, it's a good jumping off point for readers. And it will provide you series in order too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which is which is helpful, especially if you're helping someone at the desk. What's the next book? I mean, you can use Google, you can use Amazon, but Novelist is a pretty reliable, yeah, you know, library-oriented tool that should be correct. And and sometimes series can get complicated when they have volume zero or volume like one point five. They've got the novella yeah. in there. Yes, yes, it's it's always fun when a, when an author throws. It's not so bad when it's just like a side story, but I re remember Charlene Harris threw like a key plot element in a novella and people started reading the next book in their series and they're like, wait a minute. When did this happen? Like, yeah, you're like, what? Yeah. And she has sworn she will never, ever, ever do that again. <laughs> she yeah, got so much like hate from, from people who were like, how mm. could you do this? And, well, it, and also, it was like a short story that was in like a group of short stories by a bunch of authors. So a lot of people just skipped it. Well, yeah, you're not going to, if it's by a bunch, if it's a, included in a thing by a bunch of authors, you don't have any obligation. I wouldn't think that you would expect that to be, you would expect it to right. be, like you said, a side story about a side character, probably. And also, some people seem to do the novellas as like ebooks too. You know, they might print, yeah. have print versions of all of their main books, but then there's these ebook novellas that don't make it to print because they're like 60 pages long or something. Um, and yeah, I think it's a jump to expect all of your readers to find those. Yes, yes. And she has sworn she will never, ever again do key plot points in novellas. <laughs> um, right. Or introduce a character, a new character to the story. I forget what exactly it was. I think it may have been a new character. You know, like, yeah. hey, who's this? Where's right. the next story? So, yeah. Um, but moving on. Yes. <laughs> Talking about other digital resources. Yeah. Um, another one that I think um, people will find very interesting is Fold3. A lot of people don't know what Fold3 is. It's a... It's a I don't know what this is, and we even <laughs> like to find ourselves looking at this, and I don't. I feel like I've still never heard of it. It's. Um, are you reading? I have not started the Dorinda Jones series yet. I know that was one of the ones that Allison picked for me, but I haven't started it yet. Um, I need to though. Uh, but Fold Three is a. It's a military history, a military records da database. So you can find military records. Um, they also have a new thing on there where they started um, Civil War stories. So like diaries and entries and letters, like people telling Civil War stories. Mm -hmm. um, those are now in there. It's kind of like in 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 beta. So that one's not fully fully functioning. But um, but yes, it's military history and records. And like, I had a patron call. They're like, hey, I see that like my grandfather's got this Civil War veterans plaque on his tombstone. How do I find out where like his service history? I was like, oh, let me try here. And I was able to find him That's and awesome. his, his service history. And then in um, our historical or Ohio room, if you prefer that name, I was able to find inf information on his regimen. And it said, you know, we started here with this many people and this, these, and these tools. And we went to, you know, like it told like that regimens, like what, what they did. And That's so that was, awesome. I was able to find their like complete history for them between that database yeah. and what we had. So well, that had to feel so good too. Yeah, like, it was cause, Cause I had like only like done like two or three like test searches in in fold three i've not really used it before and i was like yeah let me see if i can do this and i did 
That's but it has awesome. a tutorial. So if you're someone who's not used to databases, it has a tutorial. So it will show you exactly how to get in there and find records. That's great. That is so cool. And it just has to be so satisfying, not just to, you know, like help a patron or something like that, but just that sense of like detective. I, finding I think that's what I love about reference work is that detective element. It's kind of like detective scavenger hunt. Like, what are you going to find? Puzzle. Yeah. I like that. That's great. That's really cool. Um, I had, I looked up the literary reference center. Clearly I have a one track mind. Um, but we have something called the Literary Reference Center, and it's one of several many databases offered through EBSCO, and um, they provide access to like scholarly journal and other types of articles about, in this case, uh, works of literature. Um, and so I was looking at, you know, recent articles about The Great Gatsby, because as we know, it came out of um, copyright mm -hmm. this year. So there were a couple articles that came up about that, and then there was an article um, again, these were scholarly journal articles, one about using the Gatsby films to talk about just the validity of making a, of like a reinterpretation, like there's a work that exists and then a reinterpretation of it. And so they looked at the, the different interpretations of um, the great Gatsby on film for that. And I will say that, um, I don't know if you'll touch on this too, but if you're using one of our resources, it's offered through EBSCO. The EBS, it takes you to a page, they all look the same because you go to this page and it's the EBSCO page and above your search box, it tells you what database you're searching. But um, if you've never done this before, you could be like, well, if you're not looking at that exact line, it might you might think you got taken to the exact same place and you did, which is a service called EBSCO that helps you search all these scholarly journal articles. Um, but, and all, the other thing about it is it is not like searching Google. Um, the results look different and your search strategy needs to be a little bit different. So it does, it does kind of take a little bit of an, an investment. Like you want to do some research and you got to play around with it and, and work with it to get what you want, which you absolutely can do, or you can call the library, but it is just, it's not, it doesn't work like Google works. Yeah. Um, they have made it like easier. So you can just put in like a few keywords and, and get it. But um, there, there are some tricks to doing searching well in there because you, because you can get some results doing just a, an easy search. So, don't feel like it's too hard. You're not going to get anything because you'll get something. Yeah. Um, sometimes doing the the more specific searches, um, yeah, that takes a little bit of. Yeah, and yes. just encouraging encouraging using the, all those filtering options. Yes. You know, I knew that I wanted to find something from recent times about the Great Gatsby, so you can pick. <laughs> let's, sort it, let's sort it by new by new date, you know, make the newest things first. That kind of thing will really work to an advantage in a search like this. Boolean that search. Uh, yes. yes. Oh, Liz, oh. I enjoy your humor. <laughs> uh, but um, but yes, so the the EBSCO, EBSCO is awesome. Like one of my, I remember when I was in library schools, one of my projects, one of was to research the company of EBSCO and like, because they do this huge database for libraries and they do lots of other, like um, they're a newspaper and journal jogger. Like, you, know, you, you, you go to them and say, I want these magazines and they go to all of those magazines and time your subscription so you don't have to worry about doing that. You pay one bill. A year and you get 250 magazines rather than going and paying 250 bills at 250 different magazines it's it's yeah. it would be a nightmare no um yeah. but that's one of the so they're like very big in the library world we use their products all the time but one of my our projects was you know do company research on this on this company what else do they do and i was very surprised because they also had like fiberglass fishing boats and fishing lure like they like there was a branch of their company that like did fishing stuff and you're just like oh okay like like that's that wasn't what i expected no not at all yeah. i was just there was yeah i just i don't even know what to say actually i wonder if like one of the people in the family is like you know i just i, I can't get into a lot i can't get into books i'm not a reader I want to do something else. So the company, the family was like, here, go fish. Like, 
<laughs> like you just kind of wonder how some of those things come right. along. But it was just like they they're I was just not expecting the fiberglass mm-hmm. fishing stuff. No. So yeah. That was um, weird. Very weird. And I don't know if they still do that. It was yeah. that one time. That's really interesting. I don't think I did that project in library school. I don't remember having to do something like that. I think you had a different reference teacher than I did. I did, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, How fun. It, it, was, it was very odd. And um, But I will jump to a different database. Um, we have the Chilton Automotive Repair Database. So mm-hmm. if you are like, I need to replace the headlight in my car, how do I do that? Um, it will give you directions on how to do vehicle maintenance. There's that's about as as much as I'm willing to do. So how to change a headlight? Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it will get into like electrical diagrams, and it's very funny when I help patrons search it, and they'll stand well before when you would have them stand over your shoulder and breathe on you like not now but in the past i'd be like i don't know what any of this means you tell me which one to click on <laughs> so you pull up these electrical diagrams with these lines and these pluses and minuses i'm like does this mean anything to you They're like, yeah. I'm like that's what i'm looking yeah, for to you because it does not mean anything to me but right. i can get to it <laughs> how to break your car 101 liz says yes that's what would happen if i began using any of these diagrams so exactly Best of luck to all of you. But yes, it's there and it's one that you can use from home. So if you get into the middle of a project and you're like, where do I go now? Mm -hmm. You can go to the library's website and figure it out. (laughs) That's great. Well, I'll talk then about lynda.com because I really like Lynda. Um, Lynda is a series of videos, video tutorials on lots of different things. And it's oriented for business, professional but it's very broad. It, there's uh, there's photography stuff on there, right? Yeah. Like digital yeah. photography yeah. manipulation. Um, the thing that I've used it the most for in the past is Excel. Um, honestly, yeah. because Excel is one of those things that feels like a mystery, and you're like you're always having to Google how to do something beyond just entering stuff in cells. Um, and so I, I never did. have to Google how to use Excel. I just yell Helen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but do you know what Helen has done? She has taken courses in Excel. So. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't have that because I have Helen. Right? Uh, she, <laughs> Linda.com can, it's not like a like an academic course. It's just videos that you watch on your own time. But a lot of, I think that there are circumstances where your employer could count it as um, professional development or yes. you know, credit in some way for learning something uh, for your job if it applies. Um, and they're just, they're scaled. They have different levels. They have mm-hmm. different lengths. And I just, I have always found it really helpful. And this isn't like, you know, some dude who just reviews, some, who goes over something and posts a video on YouTube. They're not videos like that. These are like li- industry leading experts. Like some of these people are like the expert in the field mm-hmm. who, who's teaching this course. They're the people who write the book, Excel for Dummies, that goes on this, yeah. you know. Yeah. These people, they they, they, know, they know what they're doing. Um so, yeah, that's a good point. They're re- they're very well done videos with people who are experts. It's not just me making a video telling you how to do something in Excel or even Helen making a video telling you how to do something in Excel. Although it sounds um, like she is very much an expert. While we're talking about Linda, I want to announce that in May, Linda's name is changing. Oh. It's becoming LinkedIn Learning. Um, you don't have to have a LinkedIn account to use it, um, be, you know, privacy issues and all of that. So, um, but it will, the name is changing and it will look a little bit different. I'm not sure the exact date that is happening, but I know because it's got to change for all the libraries in the state and they're kind of like rolling it out. So sometime in May, it's going to change and it will become LinkedIn Learning. Mm-hmm. Okay, good to know. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I had forgotten too until you were talking about the certificates. So, so, yeah. So, if you have any certificates in your Linda account, print them out before it goes to LinkedIn Learning because I'm not sure how well that information will transfer. Okay, that's good to know too. Yeah. But yeah, it covers all types of topics. And mm-hmm. um, I feel like you could, the most, 
most people could find something in there that they would learn from for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I need to get into some of like the, the publishing stuff. I'm really bad at making signs. I'm like, throw a, a picture up in a Word document <laughs> as far as I right. know. Right, I need to yeah. a publisher and all of that stuff. Yeah, it's not my favorite thing either. Although I have to say, I think they do have some graphic design stuff on there as they well. Do. You know, they but do. knowing how to use publisher doesn't actually make you give you a better eye for making a good sign. I just want to throw that out there because that's where where my feeling is is I can't even conceive of what should be on the poster. I know what would look good. I have no idea of how to make it happen. You know okay. what I mean? I also don't know how to what would look good. So yeah, I think I do. Mostly. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah Linda.com is a great place for you to start. Right? Or LinkedIn Learning if I start next month. I'm sorry. LinkedIn Learning. <laughs> uh, what else do we have? Got some what do you have? Stuff. I, I use uh, New York Times a lot. Um, I, I, I like the news. I know. I'm a weirdo. But um, if you start at our website and you go to the digital services and streaming uh, there's a link to the New York Times. You have to log in with your library card and it'll take you to a page and you're like, yes, redeem this code. And you get three days worth of access to the New York Times online. And it's like today's paper. There's like no lag time. It's not like it's last week's news. It's today's paper. Um, and it even gets updated throughout the day as news stories break. But um, like I said, that lasts for three days. You can log in with, you can put in your email address and a password to create an account, and then you can use that account for three days. But um, after three days, you just come back and you click that button again mm -hmm. to, to access it, and you just read some more. Yeah. Um, if you're in the library and you want to use it, you just have to click on it, and it will go straight there. Um, but I, I like it for up to the minute news and it's really easy to use. Yeah. There's no, even though that you have to like redeem a code, you're not really doing anything and you yeah. don't, um, you're there's no upper, upper limit, no upper limit on how many times, uh, yeah. you can do that. And it is really nice as there's just, there's more and more paywalls when yeah. you're you know, accessing news online. And it's great to have this as an option, um, especially if something big is going on, you know, to mm -hmm. be able to, yeah. uh, Log in that way and have follow. Yeah. 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 So. That was actually my next one that I was going to talk about. So I'm so sorry. That's okay. And it was also my last one because, because I'm just less familiar than Leah as this is one of those moments where our job duties are very different. So I, are. I'm not really helping people with this. You did mention consumer reports though. Oh, can you tell us about consumer reports? EBSCO. EBSCO. They, like Allison said, there's a whole series of databases that, that they run. Um, like they're, they have like hobbies, ones, a job accelerator, one, um, medical one, green file, or like, they, they've got like a whole series of, of databases. One of the ones that I usually go in is just, um, the, I think it's the very first one on the list. When you get to the, the list of ones, um, the academic database, I, I'll just hop in there. And um, there's, when you get to that list, there's like a whole list of databases because they divide the, the academic into different subject specialties. And, but at the top of that list, there's one that's master file premiere. And um, that one is just a very general collection of, databases it's like a little bit of this a little bit of that and your popular news kind of sources mm -hmm. um with that one you can do a title search and if you do the title search and you search like you can search just within a specific um publication well i i like the title search because i like using it for consumer reports and you can go and you can see the consumer reports and you can see the article mm -hmm where they, you know, which washing machine do they recommend? Yeah. And that's um, really, really convenient. And you can get like the, the PDF files of the of the articles. You can see what color that little dot is. And it, it, so it's all the information that you need. To access that, is there a mass, is, do I, can I get to master file? Do I get to that from our list of databases on our website? 
Um, let me just because that was a lot of that was a lot of steps, and I don't know. Right. Let me. I just wondered. I'm sorry yeah. to put you on the spot. We pulled out master file. Master file is in the list of, okay. of databases. Uh, we pulled out some of the big ones. The big ones. We pulled out yeah. master file. So master file. So it's not going to be that you're not going to look for consumer reports on our list of databases. You would look for master file, and then you would search for consumer reports, and then you could probably also browse within master file to see what else yeah. master file has. Um, Actually, when you click on consumer reports, I mean, click on master file, there'll be a um a, a separate box where you can search with search for a title mm -hmm. um there's like a search box up at the top and then another search box below mm -hmm. where you can put in like if you're searching for a specific mm -hmm. um, publication yeah and that's where you'd put in consumer reports that's great that's great because that is also paid behind a paywall online so if you're buying a new car uh, Check out the April issue. April was always the month where they do the new car <laughs> information. So that's, that's yeah, that's great. Yeah. It's really cool. convenient. So I really like that that we have access yeah. to it. And like, if you're, you know, at the car lot, you can pull it up and double check, make sure you're you're not making a mistake before you leave before you sign the paperwork. <laughs> and all you need is your library card. That's awesome. Well, I know we didn't get to cover like every everything because we never do. But um, Liz wants to know: Didn't Consumer Reports used to be free? I think that like some articles are, but like they're the most helpful and most current reports most that you would actually be looking for are not. are not. You have to have an account. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. I think we've gone way over our time. We've gone way over. Yeah. We haven't gotten. We haven't even scratched the surface of databases or electronic resources. Mm. Well. Come to your library and check us out. No. Right, right. Browse the website and feel free to call in with any questions. They'll go to Leah and her coworkers and not me because I am not an expert in this. But I do play around in them and they are fun. And I just like to see what's out there. And if yeah. I think plenty of people are also in that boat. They just kind of want to see what's out there. But we have some things that are really specific and targeted and could definitely help you like Ancestry and Chilton and Consumer Reports. So, yep. Well, maybe we'll hit on more next time. Who knows? Maybe. It's good talking to you this morning, Allison. Good talking to you too. And I will, we'll see you guys next week, I think. Next week? Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you next week. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.